Oh man, which one should we go to? Should we go to Ebonheart or should we go? All right, I either want to go to Ebonheart or Renim. He did say Renim first. Should we go to Ebonheart first? I feel like maybe we should save Ebonheart a bit, right? Because isn't it like really immaculate? And it's even like it may have so much going on that it may like hinder the performance of my game upon even nearing it. Hmm. See, if only I knew which of these two, Tain or Renim, was the smaller settlement, I would go to it. They may both be really large. I have no idea. Because it would also be fitting to begin our Tamriel rebuild journey in a similarly small town, just like Sedanim, you know, almost mirroring our experiences here. Ooh, let's go with Renim. He mentioned it first. Let's go. Let's do it. Ah, oh, this is Preview Lands. No! <laughs> Get me out of here! <laughs> When we had last left the Naravarine, they finished everything, so to speak. They destroyed the Devil Dagoth Ur, ensuring that the prophecy would be complete, ending the reign of the Sixth House and the coming Corpus Blight Apocalypse that would envelop the land. And now it was time to go off to new strange areas in a land, well, in other parts of Tamriel that had been rebuilt. But first, they had to get a ring and do a check-in back at Vivek. This is the Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind. This is Morrowind Mondays. Welcome back. Let's head on back inside of here because gentle viewers... Justin and Ryan, as well as many others who afforded likes to signal boost and whatnot. Oh. How weird. I can... These are labeled. Oh, that's strange. Okay. But <laughs> that's beside the fact. Um, there is a ring in here that we have missed back in the primary chamber. Oh my gosh. Here, let's even put on our speedy time boots so we can speed on along. Oh gosh. There we go. Good. And we'll just run past everybody. Can we even go back in there or am I going to have to like load uh, an older save? It's entirely possible. Let's also pin our map for easier navigation. There we are. Good. Okay. Oh gosh. Do I even remember how to get there? <laughs> We'll see. Good. You know, this kind of would have been the perfect place to have you run back through the dungeon after fighting the boss as it all sort of crumbles around you. Right? It kind of would have been perfect for that. Maybe even give it more, like, little bits of platforming or something. Oh, yeah, give it some... Oh, that's a great idea to, like, utilize Morrowind systems and stuff. So we just went through there with the speed buff and everything, right? Have it to where... You know, I was thinking that Azura teleports you out. What if that's not the case? As a Kulikon crumbles, it begins to take apart parts of the facility and, like, starts filling up with lava a bit more. Like, it's not full-on eruption. But, you know, it starts to change the levels because, you know... Like, um... It's like, you know, there's a big pool of lava down there. It's like getting inside of a bathtub that's already full, right, to the brim. Some water's gonna spill out. Same same would apply here, right? Just have it to where a Kulikon and, like more of the ruin and, like, rubble and all that spills into the lava, changes the levels, and maybe that also destabilizes more of the dungeon, right? And then, Azura, in areas that you previously went through, like, normal style, Azura buffs up your jump stat and your, like, speed, right? Temporarily, just until you leave. And then you can more quickly navigate through the area a little bit differently, right? And you're- it's almost like a little time thing, you know? What a cool idea, huh? Wow. What? <laughs> Look at that. Morrowind Mondays. Just full of them. Just absolutely full of them. All right, here we are. The Heart Ring. There we go. Which, uh, frankly, I don't even know if we got in Chapter 1 or Volume 1 of Morrowind Mondays. I don't even know if I remember this. <laughs> but it's uh, really going to be useful for us on this playthrough, right? Given our self-imposed limitations. Which, similarly, we may very well, and some folks even remarked about this, 
that we may even be okay going into Tamriel Rebuilt as we are, because we haven't really leveled up very much at all, even though we very well could have quite easily, right? So our stats and stuff are still pretty low, just simply because, man, look at those levels, huh? That's really wild. <laughs> uh, simply because I've chosen not to level up, uh, because I wanted to try and get a, another stat up to a five times uh, multiplier. But uh, as you can see, that's really just gone completely awry. But in a sense, messing up our character a little has worked out splendidly in our favor. So we'll just go in and test it out and see how it works, right? We'll see how, how best we fare in the old Tamriel rebuilt. Okay, let's head on over here. Good, actually, should we just warp out of here? Yeah, if we want to go to Vivek and check in, let's just recall, huh? Right, I can recall out of here, right? There we go, yeah, look at that. And do we have our amazing ring equipped? Our brand new amazing ring. Yeah, the ring of Azura. Holy crap. What a good one. Okay. Anything else we should dump here for the time being? Probably, right? Like, I guess we don't need to carry around Sunder or Keening. You know, we could just put them upstairs or something. Because I'm not really using a build that utilizes either of them. Okay. Good. And then... Pop that there, and I guess I don't need Wraith Guard either, right? Cool. Should I get rid of the, like, these bone gauntlets? Bone Dancer and Bone Weave? Yeah, why not? Look, that's plenty of room now. <laughs> that's, that's enough inventory management for one day. I'm good with that. Alright, let's head on off. Go. We'll just chat with Vivek real quick. We'll see what's up. Like I said, I already checked ahead of time. All the stuff in the secret library, we don't even need to bother with it right now. Right? Only once we begin, like, the vampire arc. Is there any vampire business on Tamriel Rebuilt? I wonder. Like, is there stuff that you can only access if you're a vampire? I would assume not, because I would... I would guess that they maybe didn't want to limit it. But then again, I don't know. Why not? You know? You, the world's kind of your oyster. You, you don't really have to obey by any sort of conventions of, um, like, the base game's design or, like, expectations of, oh, we're selling this, you know? You don't have to sort of, like, adhere to that. To where it's like, oh, yeah, we want to make sure that players are more likely to pl uh, play this content and everything. Or whatever. So you can just do weird stuff all over the place. Okay. Let's head on over to Vivek. Good. And I'm thinking, isn't there a boat out by Sedanin now? Maybe that's the boat that we should take to Tamriel Rebuilt area, right? Maybe that's how we should get over there. I feel like that's a great idea. You know, because I, like, you know, we can sort of bring it full circle. We sort of begin our core game adventure here on the mainland, or not on the mainland, in Vardenfell. And then when we go to the mainland for Tamriel Rebuilt, we sort of do it by way of where we began, right? It feels almost poetic, you know? I think there's a boat there that will take us to, like, I don't know, Old Ebonheart or someplace I don't recognize. We may not even start at Old Ebonheart. I don't know. Maybe we'll just start at some random name on the list. Maybe whatever's first or last on the list of travel, right? Okay. Okay. Let's head on up here. I'm I'm pretty sure Vivek has stuff to say after you've completed the main quest. I'm like pretty sure about it. Oh yeah, look. Oh wow. We got a lot of updates here. I found Dagothur and spoke with him. He answered me questions. He answered me questions? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let me answer questions in return. Her, oh, he asked me, he asked me questions. Sorry, okay, it makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> I was like, where's this accent coming from? <laughs> and when we, and when all the questions had been asked and answered, there was nothing left to say. The time for words is past. Now only deeds can resolve this matter between Dagothur and I. I found the heart of Lorcan within the giant artifact, Akula Khan. 
I struck the heart with sunder, then struck it again and again with keening, until the enchantment was destroyed. Severed from the sustaining power of the heart, Dagoth Earl was destroyed, but the disturbance triggered an earthquake, and I had to flee for my life. As I fled from the destruction of the chamber of Akulakan, I encountered the presence of the Daedra Lord Azura. She told me I had achieved my destiny and was free. The prophecies are fulfilled, and the blight gone. But now, I'm Hordeter and Nervarim, protector of Morrowind, and must defend the people from monsters and villains. She gave me a ring as a token of thanks and blessing. With Dagothur destroyed, his insane dreams can no longer drive the people of Morrowind to madness as they sleep. Well, all right. Head on over here. Hey, what's up? I did it. Oh, shoot. All of these are refreshed now? Or is this just going to give me old stuff? The blight is gone, and we have survived. Now we must dedicate ourselves to rebuilding the temple, and you must dedicate yourself to your responsibilities as protector of Morrowind. See, I almost feel like this leads in perfectly to going to the mainland, right? All this talk here. We have survived. We have lost our divine powers, but not altogether. Some token of the people's faith remains, and we shall dedicate it to the rebuilding of the temple. Now that Dagothur is gone, we can turn our energies to more humble needs, the more humble needs of the people. It is good, honest work, and I believe there is redemption in it. Rebuilding the temple? There are still issues to be resolved between the temple and the dissident priests, and now that our greatest enemy is gone, we must reorganize the temple to meet the needs of the people. We have less need of ordinators, for example, and greater need of priests and healers and teachers. And we must find time to mourn and honor the dead. Protector of Morrowind? There is much to do. You still have Kagranax tools, potent weapons, and the wit and experience of a proven hero. The Tribunal and the Temple are happy to yield to you the duties of fighting the enemies of Morrowind. Okay, much to do. There are many blighted beasts and horrors that have survived, and must be hunted down and destroyed. There are lesser monsters and villains of all kinds who prey upon the people. There are unsolved mysteries and legendary treasures undiscovered. I'm sure you will find much to occupy you. Indeed. Okay. How about... Reorganize the temple. Without the power of the heart, our divine powers diminish. Our days as gods are numbered. I have told my priests that I shall withdraw from the world, and that the temple should be prepared for a change. We may be honored no longer as gods, but as saints and heroes, and the temple will return to the faith of our forefathers, the worship of our ancestors, and the three good Daedra, Azura, Mafala, and Boethia. The missions and traditions of the temple must continue, but without its living gods. Okay. How about... Protector of Morrowind? Oh. How about we have survived? We have lost our divine powers, but not altogether. Some token of the people's faith remains, and we shall dedicate it to rebuilding the temple. Now that Dagothur is gone, we can turn our energies to the more humble needs of the people. It is good, honest work, and I believe there is redemption. Oh wait, did I already ask this? Yeah, I did. My bad. Rebuilding, protector of Morrowind. We can ask about Dagothur. He was a god, and now he is dead. If one can truly kill a god. Ah. Fascinating. Okay. You think they'll ever bring him back in some way? I don't see why not. Like, not necessarily as a main antagonist, but as like, I don't know, a fun little nod and nostalgia wink when facing something else. Divine powers? Almalexia, Sothasil, and I gained our divine powers from the heart of Lorcan, and now we no longer have access to the heart, so we must lose our divinity. I've always worn my divinity lightly, Fundamentally, I am not at all a serious person, and I will not miss it. 
I've tried to do what was necessary. I'm afraid I've done some harm. I assure you I will be quite content to be a mere mortal again, dedicated to my own amusements. Right, I guess in a sense, there was very much like, you know, very literally, a divine burden, right? You know, that's probably, that's like, that's that's the, the crux of what led to Vivek's, I don't know, depression and everything, right? But that, not just the, the divinity, but also the way in which they came about to get it, right? Hmm. And I guess in that sense, seeing the Nerevarine returned and doing all of this is their way of feeling like, okay, we're redeemed for our past actions and like the horrors that unfolded at Red Mountain on that day, right? And which is, I think, also why Vivek is kind of, I wouldn't say cool with <laughs> with it, but has made peace with the idea that the Nerevarine could one day just show up and, like, kill the hell out of them. <laughs> okay. Almalexia? We don't communicate. Without the heart, our divine powers must diminish. She takes her divinity very seriously, and the loss weighs heavily on her. She tends to brood and I fear she will do herself and others harm. Was this in here beforehand? Before, like, a uh, tribunal? Hmm. So the sill. I do not hear from him since our defeat at Red... I do not hear from him since our defeat at Red Mountain. Truly, I scarcely ever heard from him. He is completely self-absorbed. Like myself, without the heart, his divine powers will diminish but I doubt he will notice the loss. He is fascinated by the hidden world and its mysteries, and I doubt he even notice us, notices us most of the time. Hmm. Fascinating, okay. Let's head on out. There we go, activate our speedy boots. Man, yeah, see, it does feel, it feels very cohesive to go to Tamriel Rebuilt after having done that, you know, with all the, like, talk of, like, oh, there's still... Although there is no, like, world-ending mega-threat like that, there's no, like, super prophetic, horrible thing that's about to happen. There are still threats big and small that should be dealt with, and you're, like, the perfect person to do it. Okay. And I'm, I'm fairly certain that was... That was in the core game. Forever. Because, of course, you know, Morrowind never ended whenever you complete the main quest, just like almost all of BGS's games, right? Barring a certain Fallout <laughs> without uh, uh, the very specific DLC installed. Alright. Let's see. Let's go on over to Sedanim. And we'll check on this. There we are. Great. Hey, Fargoth. You have anything interesting to say? This is a wondrous encounter. Welcome. Oh, I'm in combat right now. Okay. Can I ask you about... Nervarine? The devil is dead, and the blind is gone. You've conquered Red Mountain, destroyed Dagother and all his kin. We offer you our thanks in this happy hour. Okay, what about this creature, though? Huh. Good enough. Alright. Yeah, so I think we'll get a feel for the difficulty, and then we can adjust it however we feel in the, in the moment. Right, given the fact that we have not leveled up terribly much at all. Right. Man, should we, like, heal up at a shrine or whatever? We're a little sapped, aren't we? Nah, you know what? Perfect! Right? Let's just go with the flow. Maybe we'll uncover some shrines. I'm sure there'll be plenty in Tamriel Rebuilt. Right? Or maybe I'm just excited to get uh, get into it. Maybe that's more the case. Okay. Hey. Secucius. No. Is it okay. necessary that you speak with Oh, I can't even leave from here. 
Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck me. Let's turn around and go on out the other way. Now this, I can definitely pick into this without being seen. Let's see here. Miscellaneous. Good. Great. Yeah, because doesn't this person... They'll take you to the mainland, right? Sentius Veros. I'm Sentius Veros, shipmaster of the Coast Guard. I row irregular patrols around the coast, spotting for the census and excise cutters. For a fee, I could take you along my patrol to one of the regular ships, which will take you to your destination. Destination? Looking for a quick and silent way out of the swamps, bootlegger. I can row you out to... Ranim, Ebenhart, Tain, or La Ode on my next patrol if you wish. Oh man, which one should we go to? Oh man. Should we go to Ebenhart or should we go... Alright, I either want to go to Ebenhart or Ranim. He did say Ranim first. Should we go to Ebenhart first? I feel like maybe we should save Ebenhart a bit. Right, because isn't it, like, really immaculate? And it's even, like, it, like, it may have so much going on that it may, like, hinder the performance of my game upon even nearing it. Hmm. See, if only I knew which of these two, Tain or Renim, was the smaller settlement, I would go to it. They may both be really large. I have no idea. Because it would also be fitting to begin our Tamriel rebuild journey in a similarly small town just like Sedanim. You know, almost mirroring our experiences here. Ooh, let's go with Renim. He mentioned it first. Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, this is Preview Lands! No! <laughs> Get me out of here! <laughs> oh, God. <gasps> no! I don't want to be in Redeem! Take me to Tain! I don't know you! Take me, get me out of here! Oh, get me back to St. Anine! <laughs> <gasps> Alright, we're going to Tain! Hey! <laughs> Perfect! Oh, great! Look, and it's a small little area too, it's not enormous! Oh, perfect! This is great! Okay, cool. Wow. What do you All right, man. This is also not just my first time with Tamriel Rebuilt, but my first time with any really modded content, right? Any like modded authored like story sort of campaign stuff, you know? We've had like little graphical uh, updates, stuff where like, oh yeah, we're putting some more polygons on these ropes. We're going to... Uh, sort of fix some bugs and whatnot. We're going to change around the UI and make it a little bit more cohesive for a PC player, right? We've had all that, but nothing to where we've gone to, like, an area or whatever that was completely made by uh, fans like you and me. Wow. Okay. There's already a treasure here. Let's see what's up. Yes, hey. friend. Pien Vein. I don't know you. What do you want? I don't know. Tell me a destination. My ship, the Morning Skylar, can take you from Tain to Andothran, to the east, or Castle Ebenhart on Vardenfell. Background? I am Pien Vien, or Ven, v Venet, shipmaster. A rumor? Ah, <laughs> Every once in a while, we hear rumors about smugglers landing their boats near the lighthouse. I wonder what old man Erethys, the lighthouse keeper, has to say about that. Okay. Ooh, look, it refreshed too. How many rumors can we get? Ooh, we better not... Let's not press our luck. Okay. What do you have to say about Nerevreen? Ah, same. Of course, of course. How about Tain? Tell me about this place. What is this place? It used to be a fishing village before the Empire realized the utility of the natural harbor. Nowadays, Tain is a small town that often sees visitors on their stopovers between Andothran 
and Carter were passing through customs to and from Vardenfell. Okay. Cool. And of course, the crucial and very cool, frankly, I think, thing to remember about Tamriel Rebuilt is that it is rebuilding the mainland and everything during a certain snapshot in time, right? It almost feels as if we are using the power of the Elder Scrolls to look at an alternate reality, right? Like this, of course, it could not ever be canon, but they're approaching it in like such, I think, a smart way to where it's like, this is how people envisioned the mainland of Morrowind would be during the time of Morrowind. Obviously, throughout um, Oblivion, Skyrim, even like Blades or ESO, even probably Elder Scrolls Legends, the card game and all that. We have gotten more information filling out other parts of the world and all that, right? But this is specifically trying to adhere to information known during Morrowind, right? As far as I know, that's my understanding of it, which I think is such a wild and cool interpretation of it, right? I don't know. It's very neat, I think. Okay, specific place. There's Seraphae's Trade House, the Imperial Census and Excise Offices, and the Customs. The boats sail from the dock to Andothran and St. Anine on Vardenfell. The Lassaferos Lighthouse is located a good distance to the north. The Imperial Fort and Silas watches over the village from the eastern cliff by the sea. Roads lead southeast to Andothran and west to Carter. Dude, I kind of want to go to Andothran after this, huh? They're talking up this Andothran. Ooh, I'm getting, I'm getting excited. I didn't think I'd be so excited about this, but I kind of am. What a thrill, right? I think that's part of why it's so exciting to me is because what a, like, it's, it almost feels like a time capsule, right? It's like, it's like this weird, cool mod built out of time, right? It's like it's been removed from time and continued to work on, work, worked upon in parallel to like the main canon, right? It's such a weird, cool, like offshoot. I don't know. That part is like super weird and compelling to me. All right. Someone in particular. The two Bosmer, Seraphae and Overleg, run Seraphae's trade house. Nemo Arthaler is the chief agent at the Census and Excise offices. Rajana Jades is the commandant of the nearby Fort Ancillis. Tell me about the fort. That's the Imperial Fort nearby. Open your eyes and look east. Okay. How about some advice? Oh. Heading out for the wilderness? There are two locals in Tain whom you should talk to before doing so. Medesi Orandis, a scout at the trade house, can tell you a lot about the, the area surrounding Tain, and will also offer training. Then there is Nuvis Teldrith, Telrith, a retired adventurer who can probably tell you a great deal about survival in the wilderness. Her home is right in the middle of town. Oh shoot, okay, we need to definitely ask with them. Alright, tell me a secret. What secrets do you have? I know that Felis Peer, a commoner here in Tain, has a special ring, an enchanted ring. I don't know how she came to possess it, but I know it must be really precious because she keeps it hidden in her house behind locked doors. Oh, okay. Services? Man, also because I'm unfamiliar with all this, we have reason to go through all this, right? I have reason now to click on someone in particular services specific place. These ones which in the core game, I was like, yeah, I guess we can click on it every now and then just to hear what they have to say and all that, right? But now I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Seraphae, the Bosmer at Seraphae's trade house, is a barterer who buys and sells all kinds of items. She also rents rooms. The co-owner of the place, Overleg, sells liquors and brews. A few trainers can be found at the trade house. Medesi Urandis is a scout trainer, and Aluman Juspethe teaches the bit more stealthy arts. Brass Claws Miranzij is a traveling warrior from out of town and is known to be picky about her training partners. But maybe, if you impress her, she'll offer training too. Alright. Holy crap. Should we go in your house? 
<laughs> Should I go in your house, dude? Oh my god, I want to. <laughs> All right. Oh gosh, you're very good at detecting, it seems. Oh god, okay. Here, I'm going to equip my... my Amulet of Shadows and use that here real quick. Okay. <laughs> the real Baron Zaya. Right, of course. Oh, look at this. Oh, right, and also, we'll notice a little bit of a differentiation of how clutter is decorated, right? Because, of course, they aren't quite constrained by similar limitations from the core game, right? Even in earlier parts of Tamriel Rebuilt, this is a mod that's only available and only ever was available on PC, right? So, they didn't ever have to constrain really anything by way of it being like, oh yeah, we're also trying to put this on, like, the OG Xbox too, right? Whoa, look at this! A new brew! Oh, shoot! Sorry, I'm also trying to, like, stop saying oh shit so much. <laughs> so it's probably not needed, it's just on my mind recently. This is because, um, the old Yub Tub, not to get a little inside baseball here, uh, when we're not doing um the annual but youtube is rolling out the monetization for shorts and whatnot and a few of my videos got flagged for me like saying oh shit in the first uh 15 seconds or so like also also ones where i'm like fuck 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 oh fuck that that too but that's understandable but oh shit it was, was one that cropped up a few times uh it's not like a super big deal but um I don't know, it's just on my mind, and I don't really even need to, like, change my way of speaking because I can very easily just mute it out in the shorts, so it's not a big deal at all, and, like, it's going to have very minimal effect, except on shorts where, like, I can just, like, not bleep it out, but just, like, you know, how you doing, like, um, uh, songs with profanity and all of that, right? The clean version, right? And if you want the good stuff, you just come here, right? Where you can hear me talking about how, how I, I'm saying shit or shoot. <laughs> All right. Free Estates Wine. Should I drink it? I mean, it does give you burden, which is a really wild and interesting effect here. What? Wait, what if I need it? What if I'm going to need it for something? What if this is like a rare thing? I have no idea. I'm taking it. Okay. Some dried slaughterfish? Is this new? Dude, I think it is. Oh, man. Scales. Is this just a whole bunch of... Oh, also crabs meat. Okay. What's in your treasure? Taking that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm loving it. Tamika's Cellar Fine Wine. Oh, wow. This one's actually quite useful. It's not terribly different from... Telvani bug musk, huh? Okay. Got some scuttle. We'll eat that. Good. Anything in this crate? Restore strength. I'm gonna drink one of those just in case I need it right now. Is there like an imperial cult in town? I forgot. I forgot what was listed under services. I don't think I remember there being a shrine or anything in town. There we go. Maybe we'll find one over at, like, Androthen. Okay. Good. All right. Wow. I'm listening. Oh, man. Wow. This, I feel like I've picked the perfect place to go. Honestly, I feel like I picked very well, except for the one where we picked uh, the one that accidentally put me in the middle of nowhere under the water. <laughs> just, just don't worry about that one. But otherwise, this is like exactly what I would have wanted, I think. All right. Oh, Talaru Gelvendu Shack. Hello, who are you? It is always an honor, Nerevarine. I know you've heard it many times from many people, but let me say it again. Thank you for everything. How about... 
Your trade? You're a commoner, right? How about... Get cured? No. Okay. How about... A little secret? Okay. Same stuff that we've heard before. Hmm. Alright. Yeah, I think we're good. We could ask some lore. Oh. Morrowind is an imperial province. Though the Treaty of the Armistice lets the Dunmer Great Houses, Great House Councils control most local government functions. Outland, what do you want? Dude, look- oh my gosh, what? Wow, we got cobwebs in the corners now? Oh my gosh, and look at this shelf. Mm, it is packed with clutter. Yes! Oh, and look, we got little spools and everything over here. Wow! We are living La Vida Loca. Oh, man. She's got one of those Billy Bass singing fish. Oh, yes. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's head on out. Do you have anything to say? Honor to you, Nerevarine. How about some advice? All right. Stuff we've heard before, I believe, or generic enough where it feels as if we have. I'm going to save latest rumors. Let's I'm going to hold on. With, Let's check out this census and excise. Right? Okay. Hey. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Nervul Sadris. Sadris. Okay. You're the scribe here. Alright. Fair enough. Whoa! Look at this! Military Tactics in the New Era. Is this a new book? Is this new? I feel like this is a new book. Huh. Will this also be an, uh, like, unique way to spot stuff? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this using, like, Morrowind OG texture res? Right? Like, look at how illegible the, like, binding is there. Hmm. It may be a, the case. But that said, also with the fish earlier, that looked very high res, right? Like, it got affected Quickly, by the texture up res mod. Okay. Hey! <laughs> look! There's always a bald guy! <laughs> yeah, there's always a guard, Captain! There's always a- Wait, is there a guy in the fancy gold armor over here? No way! Hang on, is he gonna be here too? Is this- Is there gonna be a Celis Gr- Oh, there's an under area! There- The undercarriage is here- Wait, where's the Celis Gravius? It, do they have one of him? Continue through to the next door and speak with Celis Gravius. Do they have him? Is he here too? Do they have a version? Wow, this is so weird. Maybe it's him. Go ahead. No, because he's not wearing armor, right? Oh man, do they have one like him? Maybe it's detached, right? Because remember in Sedanin, it was a detached building as well. Oh, they, it may not be here. It may not be. Wait. Wait. Out of trouble. Contraband warehouse, there maybe. Is no time for talk with you. Oh shit. What stranger? Okay, no, I don't think so, but wow, look at all this contraband. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's get this Wait, what was this? Sturdy arched door. See, I feel like this door is new. I feel like this is a new door. Okay. Come on, I haven't got all day. Oh man. This is gonna be like um in Skyrim. <laughs> as well when I was like, is this Creation Club or was this in the game? <laughs> Welcome to that all over again, baby. <laughs> Alright. Over here. Let's see. Let's talk to him. Hell yes. Except this time, it, yeah, he's an Imperial, but he is bald. He's like an old, he's an old dude with the crown of power, baby. Hell yes. Nemo our sailor. Well met, Lyle Schnub. What brings you to Tain? It used to be a fishing village before the Empire realized the utility of the natural harbor. Nowadays, Tain is a small town that often sees visitors on their stopovers between Andothran and Kartur, or passing through customs to and from Vardenfell. Tell me about Kartur. Kartur is the southernmost major city of the Redoran. Oh, perfect. 
at the at least since the decline of the waters march along the Thier. It lies in the northwestern part of the Rothroran region, across the Priay River from Endothrin. Man, I gotta say the naming conventions used here, a lot of them are like completely meshing very well with everything. Your trade? I am the chief agent of the Imperial Census and Excise Office in Tain. We handle customs for goods passing between Vardenfell and Rothraren, but nowadays our job is mainly about suppressing smuggling activities and handling contraband items. Just as well, appreciating how the new dialogue meshes exactly with like Morrowind's kind of non-standard dialogue system as well, right? Like it feels very much in line with uh, the way it's like wiki, it's almost like wiki-esque conversation system works. Okay. How about a secret? Some lore? Okay. Some advice? Okay, all stuff that we pretty much know. How about House Lala? Do you say anything? Oh, this is new, isn't it? Okay, House Lalu. Most Lalu members are independent merchants, yeomen and artisans who are in business for themselves. Their connection to the house gives them a competitive advantage, connecting them with other traders, protecting them from thieves and contract violators, and so on. The most successful of these sorts of traders can be recognized- oh, it's a typo- as house peers and Lalu social elite. Or maybe this is in the core game. Lest we forget, the core game also has some typos here and there. Okay. Sure. Do you have anything to say about being an Imperial that we haven't heard before? No. Alright. Fair enough. How about the guard I captain? Only have a few moments. Let's hear blank scrolls. Almost accidentally took it. Okay. Look, they actually have a little desk for you to fill out your paper at. Jeez. Oh, you know what would have been amazing? Oh, man. And, and, and they could still do it. What if in one of these... We roll through, and there's someone going through the census and excise process, too. Right? We see someone going through it. Right? They get told to continue through to the next door to Celis Gravius. Stay out of trouble right? and you won't get hurt. How about you, Guard Captain? Do you have anything to say? Background. I'm Imperial Guard Captain. Uh, let's see. Secret? No. All right. Fair enough. Wait, House Redren. What do you have to say about them? Okay. Yeah, we've heard that as well. Okay. Now also here, notice some new books. Legal no basics. I can tell. Oh my gosh! Do they have a whole bunch of new books and stuff here? What? Holy heck. Okay, we're gonna have to read these, but I can't take these with me to read later. Right? This is a problem. Because this is definitely theft if I if I do it. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Hang on. I'm waiting. Let's see. Or should I? Okay. Before we start just taking every new item that isn't nailed down, let's at least refer to like the, some local traders and see if they have anything for sale. I only right? have a few. Moments. Like, look at this. The seven fights. That's new. Defense of Morrowind, Volume One. That's new. Oh, man, look, yeah, the textures are totally, like, um, more like OG Morrowind, aren't they? Which, honestly, at least for books so far, that works out extraordinarily well for me, right? As a way to sort of delineate, as best I can tell, what is new and what is not. Okay. Good, good, good. So who else do I need to talk to? Huh. How about you? Whatever you're looking for, I'm sure I don't know how to find it. You're definitely not on my list, right? Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna click on rumors again. F it. Okay. Yeah, sure. Over here. Someone had a house right in the middle of town that we should talk to, right? Uh, Bola hey. Rav Ravum? Okay, how about you? Yeah, thank you as well. Or I guess we should... We haven't had a chance to do this in this chapter, so... <coughs> Excuse me, Sarah. 
but well, you're the Nevarine and a big hero, and I don't really know how to talk to important folk like you, except to say, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for everything. Okay. How about latest rumors? Oh. Did you hear there was, there nearly was a bar brawl in Siraphae's trade house? A young Dunmer out of town started arguing with Alamon Jus Juspethe, even took a drunken swing at him. Thankfully, the guards arrived just in time and dragged the troublemaker away. To Fort Ancillus, I'd wager, there's the nearest jail cell. Oh, that's another interesting point. Do you think they'll handle getting arrested any bit differently here? Like, I can't imagine they would, like, alter that mechanic, right? So we probably, like, there's probably no sense in getting arrested here in Tamriel Rebuilt content, right? I would assume. Little advice. Okay. Your trade. Oh, we've never heard this before. You're a pauper. Yeah. I'm a pauper, one of the humble small folk. I make my way in the world as best I can, laboring in the fields, kitchens, and factories of the great house lords. When times are good, I live well enough by my own work. When times are hard, I live by the grace and generosity of the clan, and by the charity and good works of the temple. I am no rude beggar. We are all educated in the temple, free of charge, and it may be I can teach you something of Morrowind lore. Morrowind lore? Okay, same stuff. Fair enough. Huh. Okay. In the Another front guard. lines on the war against crime. Let's wow, get this. Look at this. Quickly. Huh. Okay. This How about is you, fellow spear? But not unwelcome. Is this Please new hair? Ahead. Hold up! Look at this. You got like a little drag or something coming out of the top there. Whoa! This is new hair, huh? Gotta be. Okay. What's up with you? Let's see. Latest rumors. The blight is gone completely. Blue skies over Red Mountain. We all owe you a debt of gratitude. Background? You're a commoner. Okay. Fair enough. Carnut's house? Mulus Roloff? Let make it quick. Okay. Let's see. Anything I should ask you about? Nervreen? The temple was wrong. You are Lord Nerevar reborn. You've proven that. You've done what no one else could do. Not even Lord Vivek. Of course, we are grateful for what you've done. Great. Okay. Look at this! New plant alert! Oh! New plant! Okay. Oh, I think maybe Nulvez Telrith might be the person we were meant to chat with. Oh, and look at this! Some new textures down here, I think? In fact, most of your house. Okay. Yeah, look. You've got an imperial banner up in here. Talk is cheap. Whoa! New bread, man! Deshaun bread? Whoa! Oh my god, I would not... New bread, really? Wow. Wow. Already, Tamriel Rebuilt is making twists and turns I could not have foreseen. Okay. That's wild. Someone just decided... <coughs> Shit, we gotta get some new bread in here. Look, we've been working on this for how many years, and we need... We gotta get some new bread. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Anything else going on? What's up with you? Well, Matt Lahelschnapp, what brings you to Tain? Tain? Okay, yeah, we've heard that before. A secret? Oh, if you liked me better, you might tell me a secret. Okay. Oh, okay, let's try. Oh, look at that. Advice lit up. Let's try it. Let me tell you, there are some mean and nasty creatures in this Rothroran, but the meanest and nastiest of them all is the Elite. 
over numerous too. If you ever manage to kill and skin one of them nasty critters, be sure to bring its hide to me. I'll pay you a decent bounty for it. Really? If you manage to kill an elite, be sure to bring its hide to me. I'll pay you ten drakes for each hide. Should we bring her a hide at some point, just to see if she'll, like, say something? I guess so. Background? You're a farmer. Your trade? Yep. Stuff that we know. Dunmer? Okay. Sure. Can we persuade you up any higher and get something else? Uh-oh. Quick, give her money. Okay. Fascinating. Alright, over here. Geloise Marard's house. Let's check inside of here, this, like, inn or whatever. Yeah, Syraface Trade House. Oh, look, they have, like, their own little crest or whatever. Wow. Yeah, it definitely feels, like, more tropical here because of these, like, fun plants. Right? Okay. Sure. Whoa! Look at you, Brass Claws! No words for you. Oh, yeah, I heard that. I was supposed to speak with... You were... you. What the fuck? <laughs> but you were brought up in conversation. Let's see, what can I ask you about? Background? Yeah, Master at Arms, Fighters Guild. Okay, Khajiit. Yeah, we we know about all this. Yeah, the Bar Brawl. Okay, your trade? Yeah, alright. Maybe you were just brought up as like a source of training, right? That makes sense. Okay. I'm looking around for like new items and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. What do you want? How about you, Gaylor Lurver? I swear, this dude's got like a new face or something. Like a beard. Like, the beard has gotta be new, right? Gotta be. It is always an honor, Neverine. I know you yada, okay, yada, yada. You know, I love the Neverine. I'm really, really into that. <laughs> Geloise Murad, a commoner here in Tain. Mentioned that her mother from out of town is coming for a visit. Oddly enough, Galois didn't seem too happy about it. Okay. Sounds like a quest. No one can beat my prices. Alright, sure. Welcome to Siraphae's Trade House. I'm Siraphae, trader and co-owner of this place. Who's the other co-owner? I can tell you're new in town. Care for gossip? I'd be happy to brief you on the latest rumors, or some little advice, perhaps, all free of charge. Or do you have a long journey ahead, Traveler? If you need to rest, we have beds available for a modest fee. If you're simply here to get drunk, just head downstairs and talk to Ervaleg. He's in charge of the booze around here. Oh, must be the other co-owner. Okay. Can I actually rent a bed now? Wow, I think I can! Yes, I'll take it. Yes, we have one available. It's ten gold for the rest of the day. Do you want it? Good, the bed is yours. The room's upstairs. Fourth door on the right. Enjoy your stay in Tame. Okay. How about... Hmm. Let's persuade a bit. Just toss around some money. Why not? Specific place? Hmm. I think we've heard that before. We could ask about all of these. How about Morrowind lore? No, I think we know about that. Okay. Background, yeah. What do you have for sale? Alright. The Imperial Kitchen. The origin of the Ash Yam. Oh, yes! And look, 25 pillows for some inexplicable reason but frankly it feels very morrowind <laughs> it's inexplicable but inexplicably morrowind to just be selling 25 pillows why wouldn't you be <laughs> oh look imperial silver cap whoa we got new stuff baby new stuff silver club okay Go goya goya 
Fortifies int and willpower. Okay. Lotham? Restores fatigue! Five points for 60 seconds. Whoa! Stunted Magicka, though, but... I mean, that's no problem for us. Okay. But, thankfully, we don't really need it right now, thanks to our brand new... Oh! The Cirelli Brothers Special, baby! They're back! Those brothers you know and love are back, baby! <laughs> of course! They would be operating. It would also be the very same brothers from Oblivion, right? Huh. Fascinating. Okay. Yeah, because this is only a few years removed from the events of Oblivion. Wow. What? What's also the effect of the Cirilli Brothers' wine in Oblivion? I don't know. Wayrest spiced wine? Okay. Imperial Heraldry in Morrowind. Foundations of Protection. Scroll of Salem's Vivication. I feel like these are, yeah, these are core game items. Okay. Holy shit, I'm losing my whole fucking mind here looking at all this stuff. Okay. Let's bring down the cost a bit. Can I sell something off to you? Yeah, do you want one of these? <laughs> okay, there we go. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Love it. Okay. Cool. Wow, holy crap. I guess I need to get started on a, like, new journal entry for all these books we're about to start. Whoa, what's this? What are all these over here? What are these here for? Iron boots? That's not in the core game, is it? Iron boots? There's just the iron chess piece, right? Silver club. Holy fuck. Okay. An iron spear? Was that in the core game? I don't... Holy shit, I have no idea anymore. I've... <laughs> I don't know anymore! <laughs> Alright, it's happening, it's happening again. Alright. Let us read. Before we call things, we have to begin Tamriel Rebuilt by doing a little bit of reading as well, right? Evidently, there's going to be a shitload of stuff. I need to, like, start up a new journal entry in my handy-dandy journal notebooks so we can attempt to keep track of all this new stuff that we're getting. Okay, miscellaneous. How about we read... Look, given the town that we're in, maybe we read about the heraldry and we save the... what sounds to be an incredible read, the origin of the Asham, we'll save that. Oh, God. You know what's really bad about this? I'm going to start to conflate lore and stuff that we learn from here with the real deal. <laughs> right? So I'm just going to start making shit up <laughs> in the future. <laughs> like, there's going to be a Skyrim video where I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, the origins of the Asham? Everybody knows. <laughs> All right. Imperial Heraldry. Okay. Sure. Guide to Imperial Heraldry in Morrowind, written and illustrated by Dolomus Heth Surim, the Imperial Dragon, right? Or as some people know it, the Skyrim icon. <laughs> but they're not quite, you know. In Skyrim land, it's a little bit damaged. The most recognized symbol of the Empire. Few are aware that the Imperial Dragon is, in fact, of foreign origin. Emperor Raymond Cyrodiil assumed it from the Seishi of Akavir after his victory over them at Pale Pass in the First Era, 2703. When the awestruck Snakemen hailed him as Dragon's Blood, the Dragon has been the sigil of the Empire and to its Dragon Blood Emperors ever since. To honor the Eight Divines, the beast is stylized in the shape of a diamond with four corners and four sides. The diamond above the dragon was added in the third era to denote Tiber Septim, or Talos, as the ninth divine. Oh my god, is this actually real? I did not know this! Or maybe I knew it and I forgot. Oh! <laughs> the Royal Wolf. Also known as the Wolf of Samachus. Oh. This emblem serves as the official sigil of the King of Morrowind, and can be seen in the banners of the royal palace in Mornhold. 
originally the personal coat of arms of General Symmachus, a trusted servant of Tiber Septim. It later became the symbol for Morrowind's newly formed royal house after the province's annexation by the Empire. The wolf symbolizes the king's loyalty to the standing emperor as it once symbolized Symmachus' ardent loyalty to Tiber Septim himself. Notice how the dragon motif is completely absent in this King Helseth version of the sigil, whereas it was still present during King Lethen's reign. Oh. I'm not familiar with the King Lethen version. Okay. Is this wolf, like, new stuff? I don't know. But definitely, like, these are all characters from real, like, Elder Scrolls history. Okay. Yeah, like, how much of this is new custom lore, or is it just... Because, of course, there's, like, a wealth of knowledge in Elder Scrolls Land. So very easily, right, the people who work on Tamriel Rebuilt could just formulate all of that information into new lore books and all of that, right? That still function very canonically, right? They're still telling you information about the world and everything. It's just information that you haven't heard before in a book. Or maybe it's information, like, from a book in Daggerfall or whatever. The Double-Headed Eagle The Double-Headed Eagle was first brought to Morrowind by the Nords of Skyrim under King Vraj Vraj? In the early First Era, associating the eagle with their matron deity, Kine, the Nords would paint this symbol on their faces and shields, hoping to win the goddess's favor. After King Vraj ended his successful campaign in Morrowind, the eagle traditionally shown swooping up from Atmora, was revised to have two heads looking in opposite directions, signifying the Nord's dominance over both East and West. Fiery Dunmerith and Frigid Skyrim. It was only natural that the Empire would adopt the already well-known sigil for itself after conquering both provinces and placing the Imperial Dragon above the Eagle. Ah... Already with these books, they are also hinting at, like, like the issues with the Empire and, like, colonizing all these areas and conquering them, right? And, like, establishing the provinces of the Tamrielic Empire. The Twin Lions. The lion, as a heraldic motif, can be traced all the way back to Second Era High Rock. Some... 800 years ago, it served as the standard of King Emmerich of Wayrest, and later became a symbol for the whole Iliac Bay region. It might be surprising to encounter such a western symbol so far away in the east, but the reason for the lion's popularity in Morrowind lies in the province's recent history. Baron Zaya, the queen mother of Morrowind, was also the queen of Wayrest during her period of exile. Man, yeah, they're really getting into the Baron Zaya stuff, huh? A popular notion is that the two lions represent her royal children, Helseth and Morgaia, who spent a great deal of their lives in Wayrest, where they received a western noble's upbringing, hence being depicted as lions. The Vainth Wyrm I wonder if my, like, text size on these is messing with the, um... The, like, cropping, the, like, line breaks and everything. That definitely feels to be the case. Because of, um... Like, this wouldn't be something we normally encounter in most books. But because this one actually has illustrations frequently. Right? Also, I do enjoy with the art as well. They have, like, this etch-like quality about them, Like, especially the lines going off the side. I don't... I'm, like, art is really not my forte. But that's very Morrowind. Like, in so much Morrowind stuff... You see, like, these etch lines, or whatever you would call it. Like, from sketching or whatever. And how they, like, kind of trail off and all that. It's very, very Morrowind. The Vainth Wyrm. A fine example of a more recent rendition of the Imperial Dragon is the Vainth Wyrm, which has been around for a little over two decades. Named after the controversial Simulacrum era, Duchess Vainth of Firewatch, who commissioned it in 3rd Era 394, the Wyrm has been the official sigil of the Imperial Stronghold ever since. The coat of arms depicts a fire-breathing dragon standing on guard atop the famous Firewatch Lighthouse. The aggressiveness of the beast is due to a civil war that took place between Firewatch and its rival, Old Ebonheart, at the time of its creation. 
In fact, the original Vaint Wyrm was reversed horizontally, so it breathed fire to west, towards Old Ebenhard. Hmm. The Fighter's Guild Coat of Arms. Originally a mercenary fighting force of the Akavira Potent. The fight. Yeah, this is all like super true. Like this is all super real shit. I feel like th maybe that's not going to be true with everything, but if this is like a common theme throughout Tamriel Rebuilt, where they like expound upon the existing stuff and like deliver it to you to uh, like players in fun and cool new ways, that fucking owns, right? I'm super into that. Because this also serves as a way of, like, you as a player sort of helping to internalize more Elder Scrolls, like, world history and all of that, right? Anyway, originally a mercenary fighting force of the Akaviri Potentate, the Fighters Guild was awarded its coat of arms by the Imperial College of Arms in the signing of the Guild Act in Second Era 321. The Guild's sigil is stylized after a heraldic achievement. It consists of a plain black and white shield with cross long swords in the background. In the original Second Era design, were curved and single edged after Akaviri fashion. Though nowadays, the arms in the background are allowed to vary depending on the region where the particular guild chapter operates. For example, a chapter in Skyrim might use crossed axes instead of long swords. Mage's Guild Coat of Arms? The oldest Empire-sanctioned guild in existence, the Mage's Guild Coat of Arms is definitely unique and exotic in design. The origin story of the Coat of Arms remains a mystery. Some say Vanis Galarian himself first drew it, but as for the symbol itself, there are two popular interpretations. First, it clearly resembles a star constellation of Ritual, a second of the Mage Cons- a charge of the Mage Constellation. Second, it symbolizes the Eye of Magnus, the primordial god of sorcery known to those who are uninitiated in the arcane mysteries simply as the sun. Indeed, both the sun and the stars are known by mages and astronomers as gateways through which magicka flows to our mortal plane. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, the Eye of Magnus, of course. It never even occurred to me. Yeah. Like, definitely the ritual and all of that. Very obvious. But the Eye of Magnus, yeah. Why wouldn't it? Insignia of the Imperial Navy. Oh my gosh, it looks foreboding as hell. <laughs> Derived from the sigil of the Tamrielic All Flags Navy, the imp Empire's naval insignia depicts a dragon of Akatosh curled up in the shape of a ship's wheel with eight spokes. The body of Akatosh represents Cyrodiil itself, all the diamond spokes protruding from the dragon's wings represent the projection of imperial power over the other eight provinces of Tamriel. The wheel can also be seen as a simplified representation of the nine divines, Akatosh being the center figure surrounded by other eight divines. Oh, man. And that's the end of it. Wow, this was really good! Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Okay, holy crap. Yeah, th what a fascinating, like, journey this will be throughout all of this. Holy crap. Okay, like I said, uh, when next we come back, we'll continue looking around here in Tain. Uh, we will definitely need to get a log going in our fun journal and whatnot to sort of ascertain all this business, right? Uh, either at the end of this video or the next one, I will also have our new year of um outros right i like to change them up every year or so but although it would be very fitting for us to do it with exclusively tamriel rebuilt like vistas and all that i kind of want to avoid that because i'm worried that i'm going to like spoil myself on seeing something right like i don't want to go somewhere and like record b-roll footage for just the outro and potentially like ruin the experience of seeing it for the first time or whatever and all that you know hopefully that makes sense so we may just have it be core game stuff i'm not sure right okay anyway until next time please take care of each other